I'm joined now by sports analyst Mike Baco. He serves as sports editor of DailyNational.com. Talk to me about the popularity of yoga in China. Sure. I mean, yoga is gaining in popularity. It was introduced in China in the late 70s, but with the advent of uh, a couple of things. One, uh, International Yoga Day being designated by the United Nations, gaining popularity and awareness among the population. The China-India College of Yoga Agreement, which uh, allowed people to take classes in each nation, which had the uh, China uh, Sports Ministry promoting it. Um, to the Chinese people. It's gaining in popularity, and it's really gaining in popularity among a very specific type of person, an affluent person, a female from a city who's viewing yoga as a way to better themselves, not only spiritually, but also from an exercise standpoint and from a lifestyle standpoint. You know, Mike, I think when I think of something uh, in China, I think more Tai Chi. So you, you, does mm -hmm. this complement this, or do you do you see this as growing in popularity, perhaps one day uh, mm -hmm. overtaking Tai Chi? Because you, you walk the streets in China, you can see a lot of people out doing Tai Chi. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously, when you think, you think Tai Chi, you think China. When you think yoga, you think India. But there are a lot of overlaps. And when you think about how, uh, how fundamental Tai Chi is to the Chinese culture and how many people are doing it, not only there, but also here, um, in the United States, it's really entrenched. But I think in terms of seeing uh, demographic change, you're certainly seeing more younger people living in cities doing yoga. You're seeing the the overflow of yoga studios, over 10,000 yoga studios in China. That is a gigantic increase. I think it's only going to grow. And I think uh, as more people are exposed to it, more people are doing it, and p more people are seeing the benefits of it, I think we're going to see more of an overlap. I think we're a long way off from seeing it overtake Tai Chi, but I also think we're seeing the type of person who may be uh, behold, uh, you know, really into Tai Chi, uh, they may be aging out of it, and we may be seeing more of this influx. Mike, uh, one of, of the, the things, population. one of the things in Francis's story that really jumped out at me is uh, the comment from the guy saying it's really tough, and, and mm -hmm. I've gone with my wife to some yoga classes, sure. and I'll tell you what, whoo, it is oh. tough. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, the I like the end though, where it's kind of meditative, but but it's a it's a, it's a difficult uh, routine Absolutely. to do. It's a difficult routine to do, and uh, just from our own analysis of seeing athletes in the professional sports like the NBA, like uh, the NFL, and even in Major League Baseball, it's low impact in terms of, of an exercise. It's a good complement to different weight training, but in terms of helping with flexibility, helping with endurance, helping with so many different ways that you could benefit on the court. Um, we're really seeing a lot of NBA athletes doing it, not only from a meditative uh, standpoint, but also from an exercise standpoint and seeing the results on the court and on the field. So I think when a civilian sees that and then they see all the other benefits that go along with it, you can see why it's gaining in popularity, not only here in the States, but certainly in China. Yeah, it's fantastic. Mike, thanks so much for joining us. Really appreciate it.